the Swiss Stock Exchange is one of the world's most innovative bourses. It was the first to use electronic trading for equities. It also created Europe's cross-border central securities depository, Intercettle, and it developed the world's first virtual trading platform, Vertex, right here in London. A year ago, Six, which runs the Swiss Stock Exchange, announced it would build the first regulated end-to-end -end digital exchange, SDX. Now it's launching a prototype. And to find out more about this, we're joined by Thomas Zeeb, Head of Securities and Exchanges and Chairman of Six Digital Exchange. Welcome to Cybos TV, Thomas. Thank you. Pleasure okay. to be here. Great. Thomas, tell us about SD SDX. What is it that's so different? We've, well, we've come a long way since last year, since the announcement. And what we've essentially done is gone from zero to over 100 people. We've established the core baseline uh, IT platforms. We've established the operating model, the business model. We've got user groups in place, and we've built this prototype. Um, I'll come back to that a little bit later. What is different about SDX is it's being run in parallel to the existing infrastructure. And the reason it's being run in parallel is because it actually integrates the various levels of the traditional infrastructure that we continue to operate um, into a single DLT-based structure. And will be based on using really digital tokens to, to represent the assets that are underlying it. But it's going to take some time before that really is in a position to to take the place of some of the existing infrastructure and therefore we're running it as a, building it and running it as a separate infrastructure for the time being with a view that over the next 10 years at some point we'll start to, to take over the existing activities of traditional uh, infrastructures. As you say, this could take some time, but how have the trials of SDX gone? What else can you tell us about the prototype? The prototype is really the, the first time really building a centralized trading instance. We're using the existing trading engine that we have because that's, that there's no sense in fragmenting that. Uh, you want to have a single liquidity pool. So we're taking that existing trading engine and from the point of matching, moving all of the settlement and custody activities into a DLT environment. And the prototype does exactly that. It is not yet at a stage where it's been upscaled to be able to handle the kinds of volumes that we need for the infrastructure. It doesn't yet have all of the uh, anti-money laundering procedures around it, the risk management procedures, the transaction monitoring, you know, all these things that are part of a normal regulated infrastructure. That isn't all yet in place. But the functional part of the prototype is already there and we, we've launched that now so that our clients can use our lab that we've set up to start, to start working with that. And, and let's stay with this, because what are the benefits that you believe that you're going to reap from this? I think you have to look at it in, in two ways. The, the first one, and, and would appear to be the most obvious, but it's actually not, it's a longer term one, is that by tokenizing existing securities, we can take out layers of the existing process between a stock exchange, a central counterparty, a CSD, you eliminate those layers and you do it in a single step. That's a huge efficiency gain. The prerequisite for that though is that you have to have the ability and the regulatory environment to tokenize all those existing securities. Behind that is a further prerequisite that our banks, the participants of the, of the stock exchange and the, and the central depository are actually capable of moving away from their existing legacy systems into a new digital world. That is going to take time. It, that just doesn't happen overnight, and it doesn't happen in a three-year period. So the huge benefit will come once you can start decommissioning existing structures and our clients can start decommissioning their, their existing legacy platforms into a digital environment, which lowers costs dramatically. We have to wait for that. That is just an evolutionary process. More immediately, the benefit will be we can open up new asset classes. We can tokenize things that are currently quite illiquid, such as real estate or art or other asset classes that currently require huge amounts of investment to, be, to create exposure. In other words, if a, if a client with, I don't know, 150,000 to invest wants to have exposure to the fine art market, unless he's getting some kind of fund units, which are, are from an administrative point of view relatively expensive to operate, 
he's not going to get that. If he has 100 million, he doesn't have a problem. But for, for the way most wealth management is done, giving access to asset classes where you can tokenize these so-called non-bankable assets just makes the pie bigger. And that's something that we can start realizing very quickly. Speaking about making the pie bigger, this is, of course, a huge step. Uh, how will you guys cope during the transformation to a digital exchange? It's a key point because there are so many great ideas. And last year in Sydney, we spoke a little bit about you know, some of the fantastic ideas that are coming up in the, in the fintech environment. The challenge is having that bridge to the traditional environment and being able to move from where we are today into the new world. The, the way we've gone forward is to really say, we are setting this thing up in parallel. It will run in parallel, um, completely separately from the existing exchange. And based on what kind of uh, securities the client is trading, it will either go left to SDX or it will go right into the traditional environment. And over that period of time, we build up more know-how, obviously, with the, with the new infrastructure, more experience, and we let the clients, through a whole series of user groups that we've set up, build out their own functionality to, to move them into that digital world. It has been a huge journey since that meeting that we had in Australia, but what are the biggest challenges you faced in the development of SDX? Quite a few challenges, obviously, there, there, but there pinning it down. The, you know, the biggest one is really to say, on the one side, obviously, there's a regulatory side, and, and that's moving forward. It moves at its own pace. It's generally a slower pace than what the technology can do. The biggest challenge is to have everyone understand that what we're building is not on top of what we already have. In other words, if we any projects that we do today in almost any bank or financial institution, including infrastructures, you build a new product, but you have underneath that already a foundation where you know that you have anti-money laundering, you have transaction monitoring, you have KYC process, it's all there. Cybersecurity, it's all covered off. What we're doing with SDX is we're building that foundation first and at the same time working with clients to build the products on top. And that's a real challenge because it's a give and take in both ways. And the market is moving fairly quickly in terms of saying, well, which standard are we going to use? Is it going to be VHS or Betamax? How do we ensure that there's interoperability between different initiatives around the world? How do we ensure that there are standards that we can all subscribe to that meet the asset protection, investor protection standards that an infrastructure requires. Those are the kinds of challenges that we're facing that perhaps a pure startup doesn't have to worry about to the same extent. Now you spoke of your plans for SDX at last year's Cybos in Sydney. What would you like to tell at next year's Cybos in Boston? Next year, very clear, based on the project plan, we'll be in production live um, with a number of products on top of this foundation that is built. That's very, very simple. It's a tough target to hit, but that's where, that's where we expect to be next year in Boston. Okay, well, Thomas C, but sadly time goes against us. But look, thank you so much for joining us. You are, of course, addressing that seminar. Too many crooks at what point do true digital ecosystems stop performing? So something to look out for, but thank you so much for joining us. Thomas Steve, Head of Securities and Exchanges and the Chairman of Six Digital Exchange. Thank you. Thank you.